Welcome. I'm Steve Adubato. It is my pleasure to introduce for the first time joining us Lauren Meehan, Director of Newark Arts Education Roundtable, which is... No, I'm asking. I'm yes, curious. Yes, which is. No, that's a great question. So we are a collective impact initiative, which is basically a fancy way of saying when you have a really big problem, you need a lot of people to help you solve it. So what instead kind of, of problems are we talking about? So we're talking <clears throat> about access to arts education. Um, in the city of Newark specifically, we're place-based, so we focus exclusively on the public schools, the charter schools, and the parochial schools within the city of Newark. What kind of barriers are we talking about for the children and young people in the city of Newark to get the kind of arts education they need? So it's a host of different challenges. Um, one is reduced funding. That's been a, a really critical piece, especially in the last 10 years uh, post-recession. Uh, there's less spending in a lot of communities around arts education. Um, different uh, teacher evaluation systems that are really test-based. So a lot of time, classroom time, that would have been spent on arts education um, has gone to testing. Um, and so prioritizing it and finding the resources for it have been a challenge, but our work in the last 10 years has definitely made an impact. Um, the district has hired a really phenomenal um, arts lead, Margaret L., um, and the new administration there um, under Roger Leone has been really supportive the of our work as well, too. Yes, has <clears throat> been really uh, supportive. May I ask you, you've been playing the violin since you're eight years old. Yes. <laughs> what got you into, how did you get into playing the violin at such a young age? So um, my public school, actually. No um, kidding. <laughs> yes, I went to the West Orange Public School through the West Orange Public Schools, um, and so I had great general music through the third grade, and then they sort of had this conversation with us. The band teacher would come in, the orchestra teacher would come in, they'd show you all the different instruments, and then you'd pick. And I actually didn't choose the violin initially; I chose the flute. Um, but there were too many flutes in the band <laughs> section, <laughs> um, and because I have. Um, really good intonation, which is really important for a stringed instrument. Um, uh, my music teacher, my general music teacher, recommended that I actually take up the violin. Um, as my parents can attest, um, playing a stringed instrument sounds very much like someone strangling a cat initially, <laughs> <laughs> till you get good at it. Um, and so they were grateful when they finally heard Hot Cross Buns. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. You, you are going to be part of a larger forum that we're having on arts education. Mm -hmm. There are two initiatives. One is the uh, Grow Up Great initiative with PNC, the other initiative that, that we're a part of is an initiative called Right From The Start NJ. You'll see the website up as well as we're talking. It's about infants and toddlers mm -hmm. growing up great and becoming the best they can be. Absolutely. What does that have to do with, I mean, talk about yes. infants and toddlers, right? Okay, so. Um, arts education, yeah. music education. There's actually um, a big push and a big initiative now through um, an organization called Cool Cat. Cool um, Cat. Yes, you can find a link to their website on ours. Um, it's coolcatnork.org, uh, I believe. And uh, their work is exclusively around this, how to help parents and preschool programs access high-quality arts education programming. Um, it's also incentivized, so it's also a way to get parents more engaged um, in activities that are going on in their local community. So it might be something that the museum has run for years or sure. the symphony has run for years, but is deepening its engagement through this incentivized program to encourage parents to bring their toddlers and preschoolers to programs. In fact, I think you're talking to Larry Tambori later today. Yeah, Larry's going to School of the Arts. They're right. one of our partner organizations. They're one of our members. Um, and they have a phenomenal um, preschool and toddler program as well. Curious about something. What do you think, what is your sense and what does the research show? Mm -hmm that for children who are exposed to music, to arts education at a very early age, what do you think it does for them in terms of their development? So there's a lot of um, good data, which you can also find on our website, which is newarkartsed.org. Can we put that up, the, uh, the website? Good. Um, and you can find really good resources specifically around early childhood education. So there are two studies that have taken place um, in the last few years that show the strong social emotional impact. So kids are more um, socially and emotionally um, intuitive uh, when they've been exposed to creative learning at a very early age. Um, it also tends that those students are better problem solvers. They're good critical really? thinkers. Because They're good team players. Because I interrupted team yes, players no, as well. It's okay. Yeah, team players as well. And so it really helps um, young children. And this is all the way through the pipeline. It's not exclusive to preschoolers, but obviously the longer you have these exposures, the more impact they're going to have over your lifetime. Um, but the focus, the drive to, to learn to participate in that activity, um, working with an ensemble, right? So you're creating the sound as a community often, especially in the preschool space, whether it's a song together or 
drumming or some kind of exercise that you're doing as a community. Building Definitely confidence. builds confidence. Um, you know, we do some work now with uh, VH1 Save the Music Foundation, who has come to Newark to invest in um, the music program in the public schools. And one of the things we noted from some of the initial feedback from those students is the confidence. Um, they felt like they weren't good in school. There were mm. things they weren't good at. And like, this is something I'm really good at. My family's really proud of me because I can do this. Did you feel that? Um, I definitely felt that. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was a pretty confident kid. <laughs> and so. Um, You're a confident adult as well. Thank you. Well, as, a, as a kid. Yeah, definitely as a you kid. You had a sense, yeah. even before you were good. Even before I was playing good. playing the violin. Yes. I, you had confidence in what? Um, in my ability <clears throat> just to do something and do it really, really well. You know, it's not easy. So every time you sort of reach a new milestone, like right. playing Hot Cross Buns, that was profound. But it was even more profound when I got to 1812 Overture. Um, and so it sort of, it challenges you in all of these ways. And it's kind of like, I compare it for some people to being like a marathoner. It's like you're always trying to best yourself. Um, but your at personal the, best. Your personal best. Um, but then in the space of the orchestra or the band, you also have these teammates you can kind of lean on and you're part of this community. Um, one of my great experiences as a young person was in the New Jersey Intergenerational Orchestra, which is a multi-generational ensemble. It still exists. It's uh, based, I think, in Berkeley Heights, um, founded by a music teacher many years ago, back in the 90s in Cranford, um, where she was teaching. And so my stand partner was like a senior citizen <laughs> and became a mentor to me. Um, and so I got all these really positive experiences from people who had completely different life experiences from me, um, who challenged me in different ways. I got to um, perform at Lincoln Center. I got to perform in all these venues, go play for Congress, play for the United Would Nations. Would not have happened otherwise. Would not have happened well, otherwise. I mean, I'm curious about this. You grew up in West Orange. For a kid in Newark, do you think it's even more important for a kid in a, in a particularly challenged community from a socioeconomic point of view? Absolutely, so? um, and there's data for that as well too. So Catterall 2012, which is um, an NEA-funded study, um, looked at a lot of other different studies that evaluated the impact of arts education on young people. Um, and what it found was not only does it have an, an impact on all young people, but it has an even greater impact in communities of need. So where there's lower income, more violence, um, you know, the sort of challenges that exist within often our urban communities here in New Jersey. Um, kids tended to have higher GPAs, better attendance rates. They were more civically wow. engaged. Um, and so it definitely has an impact on all young people, but an even stronger impact on young people in a community you love like what you Newark. Do. I absolutely love what I do. It shows. Thank you. Looking forward to you, you joining us in the forum. Absolutely. Lauren Mann, Director, Newark Arts Education Roundtable. Well done. Thank you. Stay tuned. We'll be right back right after this. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the PNC Foundation, the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the New Jersey Education Association, Holy Name Medical Center in Teaneck, New Jersey, the Northward Center, and by Georgian Court University. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.